Your Honor, on the 27th of December 2007, the Kenyan nation went into a general election. The elections were largely carried out peacefully. On the 30th of December 2007, the outcome of the presidential elections were announced. On the announcement of those results, fire was all over the Republic of Kenya. Six out of the eight provinces of Kenya, there were spontaneous violence and reactions to the announcement of the presidential results. People died. It's an acknowledged fact. Properties were destroyed. It is an acknowledged fact. Victims went through difficult times. They went through dehumanizing conditions during this period. And our sympathies, including that of my client, Mr. Ruto, goes to all these people. Not today, but Mr. Ruto has expressed this before and assisted the victims of this violence. Gathering of gossip, putting together innuendos and rumors is not the way to handle the violence that occurred in the Republic of Kenya. One needs to see professional investigations being carried out. In the course of this confirmation hearing, we will demonstrate before this chamber that no professional, no impartial, no objective investigations were carried out. If they were indeed carried out, there would be an explanation as to why there was violence in the other provinces. Madam President, um, I listened very carefully to both um, the prosecutor and uh, um, the advocate for the attorney for the victims. And I want to say that um, in my constituency where I represent, and which has been ably said by my lawyer, there are many communities across the country people live in my constituency who've come from almost every part of, the, of, of Kenya. And what happened in uh, 2007 was a blow to many Kenyans, but a bigger blow to me. We buried in my constituency many people who had actually voted for me. many people who died in this violence who were my personal supporters. Madam President, the William Ruto that uh, is under investigation or was under investigation by Mr. Ocampo must be a very different person from the one that is standing before you in this court. It is alleged that as a member of the Orange Democratic Movement, we started to plan from 2005, 2006. I want to tell you, Madam President, that I was with Uhuru Kenyatta, who is a Kikuyu, Ongeri, who is a Kisi, Kalonzo Musyoka, who is the current Vice President of Kenya. We were all in ODM up to and including September 2007, just four months or three months before the election. We were all in the Orange Democratic Movement. And you want to tell me that I would sit with Uhuru Kenyatta and Kalonzo Musyoka in Orange Democratic Movement, conspire on how to kill Kikuyus and how to kill Kambas and how to kill Kisis together with their own leaders in my, in my house. Madam President, our defense will have two aspects. 
One, the whole of the prosecution case is based on the existence of a body known as the network. The allegation is that Mr. Kosge is a member and one of the prominent members of the network. The evidence disclosed does not show this. Therefore, our first principal issue will be in analyzing the evidence to show this court that the prosecution has not produced any evidence showing or indicating that Mr. Kosge was a member of the network, if at all it existed. Two, we will show that there is no sufficient evidence to suggest that Mr. Kosge was involved in either planning or assistance of what they call network. And all that has been done is the prosecution has proceeded on a voyage of lumping together Mr. Kosge and Mr. Ruto and showing that whatever evidence they have adduced in respect of any aspect of their case, Mr. Kosge was involved. Finally, I would like to humbly submit that in order to create their case, the prosecution has prejudicially exaggerated the case against Mr. Kosge by citing large amount of irrelevant evidence which does not implicate Mr. Kosge. And in that evidence, they have further aggravated matters by confusing between Henry Kosge, Sally Kosge, and Reverend Kosge so that at the end of the analysis, it will be clear that they are not talking about the same person. It will be our humble submission that the case against Mr. Kosge is contrived and that even by the prosecution on evidence, there is no sufficient evidence to establish a substantial case, a case to believe that Mr. Kosge was in any way involved in any evidence, let alone evidence in Nandi, which he has now been restricted to. Madam President, we will desire in the course of presenting our case to show that the prosecutor's case is founded mainly on what is alleged that my client said by way of broadcast. That broadcast material is recorded. Madam President, we will want to maintain the shock that we have as we speak now, that after the prosecutor was given an opportunity to investigate and bring incriminating evidence, the only thing he brought was actually exculpatory material in respect to my client. I stand before this court today being accused of broadcasting material, directing, coordinating, and allowing people to use the station to attack a section of the Kenyans. I have been a broadcaster for the last 12 years. My first experience in broadcasting did happen in the year 1999, where I started having strong values in the Christianity. I worked in a Christian registration for six years and later moved to another Christian station for three years before CAS came into being in the year 2005. As many have said, Rift Valley, where we measure our broadcast, contains people 
of all the tribes in Kenya. Myself, being 36 years, we have neighbors in which I got them when I was born. Both Kisis, Kambas, Kikuyu, Luyas, and the rest. And we have lived with them all that time. I listen, or I understand, some of the Kikuyu and Kisi language, and the Luya. They do the same. I speak on radio. They listen to me as their son. They understand Kalenjin, and they are Kikuyus. They even sometimes contribute in my program. Who was inciting people and directing and coordinating that all the violence that happened in Kenya was because of me? And if not, then why is it in that small area? As I said, I'm a professional journalist. I've done my diploma and I've just completed my degree in communication and journalism. I know all the ethics of media and furthermore, the values of Christianity that is in me. I would never even think in a minute to kill anybody because I respect sanctity of life. Those are my values. <laughs>